Hey everybody, um, just kind of doing a random Instagram live. I posted that I was going to do it an hour ago and as usual, I'm not sure if that worked, if anybody knows about this, but I see a few people are joining, so that's good. At least I'm not uh, talking to myself, um, theoretically. Um, I'm speaking to many of you. So the title is Degeneration and Love. It came to me, this idea, um, when Stella showed me a video from Facebook of a woman who was <laughs> showing everybody the lunch that she was packing for her husband. And she was putting in there some pepperonis and salamis, you know, processed meat, some um, strawberry with like this, this like processed sour cream on it, and then sugar on top of that, um, a whole roll of Ritz crackers, uh, like uh, some cookies, I think, and also uh, like an energy drink, you know, and some other like really sugary drink. Uh, like it was just, you know, really highly processed food. And, um, you know, on, on, on one level, like, so then there was like s some other video was kind of mocking her, you know, her ignorance. Uh, but what I saw there was like, she's loving her man in whatever way she knows how. It reminded me of how life always asserts itself. Love always asserts itself, even in the most difficult circumstances. But also, there is also like this pitiful degeneration of human knowledge. And, and this kind of, I, I call it um, social capital or, or even health capital that has been essentially stripped mined, liquidated, and converted into profit. It, and which is an inevitability in the kind of monetary system that we have, in which money is created as interest-bearing debt, and in which the system only functions when the realm of goods and services continues to expand. Which means that some part of nature or some human relationship or some human capacity that was once outside the money realm gets converted into money. So the, the depletion of forests, you know, or groundwater or oil, petroleum, the drawdown of all of that corresponds also to the depletion of the reservoirs of human health that can be converted into money. And we've reached, we're reaching like a really... I won't say rock bottom, but um, the level of, like the general level of health, even compared to like the 50s or 60s, if you look at photographs of gatherings, you don't see so many obese people then, very few, in fact. Um, Stello took Carrie so a couple of years ago to a, an, an amusement park, not one of the big ones, you know, not Disneyland, but like one one of the surviving little ones in Pennsylvania, they used to be all over the place, um, which is another form of, of cultural capital, you know. Anyway, but, but she was like, almost everybody there was either obese, you know, or just sickly, in pain. You can tell when somebody has, a, has like, like a really bad neck and back pain, you know, they kind of hold themselves really stiff. Like everybody was like that. And, and so there's that, degradation, degeneration of health, but there's also so much beauty there. Like, they are suffering, they're in pain, and still they take their kids to the amusement park and get some joy out of life. So it really moves me, the, um, the indomitability of the human spirit, like the, the will of life to live and to express itself in all circumstances. And it moves me all the more, the harder the circumstances are. 
I've seen some of the videos from from Gaza, you know, where where there was one uh, of this this child, this like eight or nine year old boy, you know, with such a big smile, and he was so happy about something, even though his father had been killed, you know, and they were living in a uh, they they had you know they had been shuffled back to some part of Gaza that had been you know that they'd been evicted from before, and now Israel saying now you. You could, you know, you can't go there. You have to go here, and they they ended up going to their old apartment, you know, and it had like no roof and stuff. And but he was like so happy, you know. And uh, so yeah, this woman making lunch, like every item she put in there was full of her love. And um, you know that's part of the whole drama that we are in the drama of degeneration, the suffering that it causes, the ordeals that it puts human beings through, and the opportunities for kindness and generosity and fortitude that come from those circumstances. I mean, many of us are, are much more fortunate or much more privileged, and our role, you know, maybe not be may not be to suffer in that way, but then we can be moved to do something about it. And that invites us into our role in the drama and our opportunities to develop the soul. And, and you know, doesn't that feel a lot better to see it that way than to mock that woman and scoff at those people and feel superior? You know, it's not her fault that she's in the totality of circumstances in a culture where knowledge is so degraded that maybe she doesn't even know how to cook. Maybe she doesn't know better. The de-skilling, so profound. Any any time that I feel myself in judgment or condemnation, I know that I'm missing some information. There's something about that person that I don't understand. Something about how they reached those circumstances that I don't understand. So, yeah, all together, this um, degeneration, and it's just continuing, you know, <clears throat> the degeneration is intensifying. We've, it's, you think it's bad now, but as technology progresses, as, you know, new pesticides enter the food chain, have you heard about the... Uh, a new kind of pesticide, the uh, RNA interfering pesticides. I won't go into the details. The point is that it is inevitable that the, that the, the, the degeneration will continue until we shift into a new story that understands that what we do to the other, we do to ourselves, that something always slips through the tight grip of control. And the harder we squeeze in an attempt to control the world, to control the pests, to control the people, the more slips through our grasp uncontrollably and with greater force. Until we learn that, the degeneration will continue. And we will continue as well to have these initiatory experiences, these opportunities that enable us, they, they, they give us the opportunity to define who we are in this situation. Like, who are you in the circumstance of seeing that video or of meeting such a person? What does it bring out in you? What, what menu does it present you of thoughts and words and maybe even actions? Each one of those choices is a self-defining opportunity. All the more so for those who are in it. But you know, I mean, it might seem that the suffering is so much greater for maybe that woman's husband, you know, and all the nourishment he gets is ultra-processed meats and energy drinks. 
you know, he's probably not very healthy too. He might be, who knows what he's suffering from? Who knows what pain he carries behind his nonetheless cheerful face and his kindness? I don't know who he is, but I do believe that because along with the junk food, his wife is nourishing him with vitamin L, which stands for, in this case, love and not LSD, because he's nourish she's nourishing him with that. Some of that kindness, some of that love is being passed on. You know, he's in that field. Despite his suffering, and it might seem that someone like him might be suffering more than somebody who shops at Whole Foods, you know, and knows how to cook and and is in a seat of, of affluence and privilege compared to that man or compared to a child in Gaza. But, you know, actually, this is another aspect of the new story that we are striving toward. Actually, the suffering is inescapable. Because, as I said before, what we do to the other, we do to ourselves. What's happening in the world is happening to us. And the suffering is no less within the McMansions of the elites, the psychological suffering, the despair, the addiction, the emptiness. It's its own kind of suffering. And therefore, the opportunities those soul-defining choices are equally available to all of us. It's just a matter of how do we meet it? Who do we choose to be? What do we define a human being as in such circumstances? How do we role play the drama, the story that we are in? And if we do it well, that story will be completed and humanity can begin to tell a different story and enact different dramas that maybe don't involve so much suffering. Okay, thank you for your attention. I don't know exactly what an Instagram Live is supposed to be, but this is what it was. And now I gotta figure out how to turn it off.